Hello my friend, today we will take a look at a very powerful image processing software Aurora HDR 2019. As you might know, I am a big fan of Luminar, which is in my opinion a very good alternative to the Lightroom. Aurora HDR 2019 was made by the same company Skylum Software and it is a very useful piece of software for processing HDR shots, merging multiple exposures into one picture and also for creating single exposure HDR images. So in this video I will try to explain how it can be used, what is the difference between the Aurora and Luminar or Lightroom and how you can use Aurora together with Luminar or Lightroom to get the best possible results. As always this video is not sponsored but you can use code THS10 to get 10 dollars or euros of the Luminar or Aurora if you want to purchase it unless there is other sale going on and the link will be in the description. Let's get right into the main reason why you might want to use Aurora HDR and why I personally use it, which is the unique processing. HDR image is generally an image which captures details in both dark parts of the scene and the bright parts of the scene. One way to achieve that is to take multiple exposures of the same scene and stitch or merge those exposures together. Most cameras can do that automatically using the bracketing option, for example Panasonic Lumix cameras can take up to 7 shots from minus 3 EV to plus 3 EV. HDR processing software then takes these images and it uses underexposed and overexposed images to recover the detail and information from dark and bright part of the frame. Aurora HDR uses unique Quantum HDR engine to do this. This engine evaluates the images and it merges them into one big file containing a lot of information. Lightroom can merge these images into HDR as well, but to be honest I am not very happy with the results. There is actually not that much of a difference between single row with recovered shadows and highlights and seven rows merged in Lightroom. In Aurora HDR it is a very different story though, so let's take a look at how does it work. There are basically two ways how we can use Aurora HDR. The first one is as a standalone software and the second one is as a plugin. Using it as standalone software is very easy, you just need to open Aurora HDR, locate your images and drag them over to Aurora or you can click on open images. Here you can see your images and the amount of exposure compensation that was used. Then I recommend selecting auto alignment, ghost reduction, color noise reduction and chromatic aberration reduction. Then you can click on create HDR and Aurora will start processing your images. This will take a while because it has to deal with a lot of data. If you want to use Aurora as Lightroom plugin that is also very simple, you just need to select the images, right click on the images, go to export and under Aurora HDR 2019 select the option open source files. Then you will have the same options. I really like this integration, it works great, it can also be used with Apple Photos and Adobe Photoshop, integration with Luminar 3 will also be available soon. After these images are merged, you can immediately see that the amount of detail and color that it was able to get from those 7 shots is on another level in comparison with Lightroom HDR merging. Another thing that I like about the Aurora is that it is kind of based on the presets. Here you can use a lot of tools and basically edit this file like in any other editing software but with some HDR specific options. The interface is actually similar to Lightroom, so we have usual white balance, tint, highlights, shadows, blacks, whites, vibrance, saturation and so on. You can use these tools just like in Luminar or Lightroom, but you will be able to work with much more information and you will also be able to push it further without reaching limits of the file. Then there are some specific tools or filters. These are the HDR Smart Structure, which reveals the details using that extra information. It works great, it looks very natural, so I use it a lot. The second filter is HDR Clarity, which locally increases the contrast and it makes the image look sharper. And there is also HDR Microstructure, which controls the amount of detail in your shot. Another way to do that is by using HDR Details Boost, which selectively increases sharpness depending on the image structure. 
HD Arduino noise is also a very important tool in some specific shots, like for example this shot of Osmo Pocket, because it helps you minimize noise that may appear if you want to recover shadows as much as possible. Of course, there are other useful tools, like for example polarizing filter simulation. I have talked about some of those in my Luminar videos. The way I use the Aurora is that I always start with some of the presets. There is a lot of great presets available in Aurora. For example, for this shot, I chose the preset called Warm Landscape with intensity decreased to about 75 and I fine-tuned this preset using HDR enhanced tools, polarizing filter and a bit of HSL controls. Other presets that I also really like to use are Aged, Golden Hour, Teal and Orange, HDR Look 1, Matrix, Warm Landscape and many more. Aurora HDR also works pretty well with single image. It will still analyze the image and recover as much information and dynamic range as possible. Of course it won't give you as much flexibility as multiple merged images, but it still provides those special HDR filters and presets, which can give your single shot images unique look, so I also use it with single images a lot. When you are done with editing, you can export the image. Here it depends on whether you are using Aurora as standalone software or as a plugin. If you are using it as a standalone software, you can click on export the image and here you can choose the file name and destination. If you want to publish your image, you can select JPEG and set other parameters. If you wish to do more editing in some other software, for example in Luminar, you can select TIFF, which is basically a raw file containing all of the information. This will create one big file that you can import into Luminar 3 and continue with editing there. If you are using Aurora as Lightroom plugin, you can only click on apply button, which will save it as TIFF file, which you can then edit and export in Lightroom. So should you buy the Luminar 3 or Aurora HDR? Luminar 3 is all round software for usual editing and keeping the images sorted in catalog. It also has some great features that are not available in Aurora, such as one slider editing using Accent AI filter, it has AI Sky Enhancer, Sun Rays, Mad Look and much more. So I would recommend either getting both Luminar 3 and Aurora HDR 2019 in a package or getting Luminar first. If you are already using Luminar or Lightroom, Aurora HDR is a great complementary software for merging multiple exposure images or for getting unique look with single shot images. So overall I am very happy with Aurora HDR, it is a great software for HDR processing, it can certainly make your Instagram page look more interesting and it is a very easy way of achieving great look for your pictures. Just don't get carried away too much with HDR editing, try to keep it simple and enjoy the results. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you liked this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.